and welcome back to redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd i'm your host mikey and in today's tutorial we're going to be working on the sangria wine bottle cover now sangria is a taste of wine it's a type of wine and in fact it's the only wine that i actually enjoy so when i was doing this i figured the colors here with the boutique midnight with the transition in colors as you see within the yarn ball really did remind me of sangria so today's tutorial i'm going to be showing you the basic template and how to make this cover but i'm also going to cover what happens when you have a different size bottles just like you see I'm going to show you how to be able to adjust to the pattern so that you may have a different size but also have the same concept in order to work it as a project so let's get started on the sangria wine bottle cover compliments of redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd to get started I have written instructions to go along with this video so if you prefer to follow with instruction format instead of videos you can just simply just go to my website at thecrochetcrowd.com I'll provide a link in the more information that will take you directly to this pattern and again it's the sangria wine bottle cover pattern. So what we have here is that in the instructions we're going to be covering the different size bottles just like you see and essentially we have two components of this particular wine bottle so let's discuss that now. The wine bottle is now lying on its side and essentially we have two components. You have the base that is completed separately and then the cover that is completed separately and then once we do both then we put them together and then we obviously add our final touches just like you see. So my wine bottle cover here goes in rows from bottom to top or top to bottom however you want to look at it but I really wanted that because of the way that the yarn transitions inside the ball is that I wanted the transitioning to go in a vertical format going up the bottle instead of always being typically going around and around and around that you'll see the layers slowly transitioning going up. That's a personal choice and then it was up to me. This pattern is exceptionally simple and then afterward you can just embellish your bottle which is adding a few bells. I got this cute little owl at Walmart including the bells and then this has wire inside of the ribbon to hold its shape and that's something that you can do afterward as well as I will cover if you don't have that and you just want to do a tie with the same yarn I'll cover that in instructions as well. So let's uh, get started. We're going to start off with the round section first and then move our way to the top. This will not be a very long video because essentially once I get you started you'll understand the pattern and then carry on right into the holiday season. So let's get started now. To get started today you are going to need a size 6 millimeter or a size J hook. You also need yarn that complements that same size hook. I'm going to be using Red Heart with Love due to YouTube videos being very difficult to see dark yarn in video format. I'm just switching off my yarn just for the colors. You can change your colors at any particular point in this project. Remember that most of my videos are mostly about a template and you can exercise your creativity. So let's begin and you can see this in the instructions is that we're going to create a slip knot and essentially just chain two. So one and two. So to begin the next step all we want to do is single crochet in the beginning chain for six times and this is going to create a ring around the center. So we just have to single crochet so that was one, two and let this straggler just kind of come on top of it so that you can just come around it and trap it in a position. So this will be three, four, five, See how that straggler is getting caught in there? And this will be the sixth one. Now on this particular project we never want to do any slip stitching because you'll see a definite line but we have to be able to count the stitches going around in a circle and we cannot do that in a continuous round. It's just virtually impossible. At least it is for me. So I essentially just want to come into the very last stitch that I did and I want to grab a stitch marker or a piece of yarn, whatever you prefer. The yarn is kind of cheaper. I never lose them. <laughs> so here we go and essentially this is going to mark my rotation as I go around and essentially that begins or that ends then round number one. So let's go into round number two. To begin round number two you will see increase six times. Increase means that there's two stitches in one stitch. Okay so there's two single crochets in one stitch. So essentially as we go around each one of these six, so one, two, three, four, five and six will each have two single crochets. So let's do that and that begins. So let's do one and two. So you notice I didn't slip stitch. I just immediately went into the next one that was available and then one and two. And I want to continue to do that all the way around. So one and two. 
I've tried doing this without stitch markers. It really is impossible because then you start second guessing yourself if you've actually gone around or whether you haven't got enough. Okay, and so then the final one here where we have the stitch marker is your final one in the revolution and of course that will have your two uh, single crochets in the same spot as well. So before you move on to the next level, just put this loop aside, put your hook in again to the stitch there and grab that yarn and pull it through. Just the purple yarn and that will mark the last one for you and it's just leave that in there until you get this whole circle done because then you'll know that you'll see this line going out on an equal level. So let's move along to round number three. Moving along to round number three we have single crochet in the next single crochet increased and repeat that five more times. So let's begin. So the first one is going to be one single crochet and the next one is going to be an increase which means that there will be two single crochets. And we want to repeat that all the way around. So one and then the next one will have two single crochets. And this is how you grow your circles if you've not been familiar with that. So one and then this one will be two. And this becomes important information because if your bottle is even bigger than mine then you're going to want to be able to learn how to do that. So just continue to go one and two all the way around. If your math is done right, your very final stitch that that stitch marker is will will have two single crochets in it. So I'm at one now and then the final one which is where the stitch marker is will have two single crochets. Just like you see. And then that uh, finishes off round number three but before you finish just again we want to mark that final one bring that stitch marker up and through the stitch so you can see it later like so and then begin again as we do the next round. So let's uh, move along to round number four next. So in round number four we have single crochet in the next two single crochets and then increase and repeat that five more times. So let's simplify that again. So we begin and we do two single crochets in a row. So one and then the next one is going to get a single crochet and then finally the next one is your increase so you'll have two in there. If I could just point out something to you, if you see below you will have two single crochets here. This where the two is always ends up on the second one where those two are in the bottom if that makes any sense to you. So we have one and then a one and then the next one will be two and you can see underneath it's the second one. If you can see that that really helps you for other patterns where circles are a big deal including hats. So we have one, one, and then this is the double. So there's two single crochets there. So we have one, one, and then this will be the double. Okay, and then we have one, one, and this one is your double. And just like before, the double should always end up in the stitch marker. So we have one, one and then this is your double. So put two in there. This is your final one and then again just pull your string up and just pull that yarn through that final one at the top so you can see that again and we're going to move up to round number five next. So we're actually almost done the base if you can imagine. It goes that quickly. So we're going to move up to round number five. You know I'm looking at this diameter. If this was ice wine you'd want to stop at this moment because it would probably be the size of an ice wine container. So again you just have to continue to follow the pattern as we go. So moving up to round number five it says single crochet into the next three single crochets and then increase. So just like before so we're going to go one and the next one's going to be one so that's two and then the next one is one so there's your three single crochets in a row and then finally it's the double. It's the two single crochets together. And again that one will fall where the other one is double underneath as well. So we got one. So we have one, one, one. There's your three and then increase which is your two single crochets in there. And you will start to notice that this circle will start turning into a hexa hexa hexagonal shape and that's normal for a crochet to do that. Okay, so there's three in a row and again there's two in this one. And again one, one, 
one, so there's your three, and then this is your double. Again, we go one, 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 and this will be your double. And just like before, so you'll have one, 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 and then double, so that's perfect. So you can see that really worked out really good. And uh, we're gonna move up to your final round because that's where my bottle uh, base ends. So if you wanted to do more than that, you just have to add more single crochets in each double. And I will explain that in the next one. So this is your final. And we wanna move that marker up one so that we can see it. Like you see. And again, we're ready for the final revolution in order to fit the bottle that I'm working with today. So I'm ready to start the final revolution as per my instructions, but I'm gonna explain something because I think you already get it by now, but I wanna tell you how to get it bigger as per my instructions. So we're gonna start off with, this says that there's four single crochets and then increase. So if you wanted to go even bigger than this in the next round, you'll wanna do five single crochets, then an increase, and then after that, six single crochets, and then an increase, and keep going until you get to the size you want. Especially in that big bottle I showed in the intro, is that you'll have to do that in order to fit that size. So this is your final, so you have one, two, three, and four single crochets, and again your double, and you will see that it matches the one underneath as well. Double meaning two single crochets. So remember it's four. So one, two, three, and four. So the next one then must be your double, meaning two single crochets. And then again, one, two, three, and then four. So that means the next one is a, an increase, a double one. And then the next one is one, two, three, and four, and the next one then is a double. So why are we seeing a hexagonal shape when I'm talking to you right now? The reason why you're seeing it is that we started off with six um, stitches right in the center, and because of that, and the way that we're growing it, you end up with six equal sides at the end. So again, let's go up one, two, three, and four, and then this one is your double. And then to bring off to the final end, so we have one, two, three, and four. And I have to say that I think I'm off by one stitch because I ended a little bit earlier, but because this is a round base, you don't have to worry about it too much. You know, this is where you start making up the rules. So once you get it in, just slip stitch to the next stitch, just like so, and then just fasten this off and leave this off to the side because your base is now done, as you can see. And just clean up the loose ends, and then we'll start up in the next part right now. So before I move along, I just wanna double check my round base to make sure it's gonna fit. So it fits this bottle just perfectly. But if I grab my other bottle that you can see, you can see that I have a little more work to do in order to get it to the round. So that's why I wanted to show you how to increase it so you can be able to adjust to it if you have to. So let's move along. We're gonna do the cover and this is really, really simple. And I'll show you how to measure and do all that next. So we're ready now to make the cover and we have to figure out how big we're gonna make it from top to bottom. How many chains is it gonna take to do that? So essentially what I did is that this is a 12 inch bottle, happens to be the same size of my wine bottle as well, is that I figured out that it was 41 chains going up and down. Your bottle could be bigger or smaller, but essentially all you have to just do is that you have to just chain. So I'm gonna chain uh, 10 and just hold. So one, two, three, four, five, five six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And so you just keep measuring it up against your bottle till you get to the height that you need. So why 41 and not 40? You have to have an even number when it comes to your rows going up. So essentially we're gonna be doing single crochet second from the hook. And when we do that, we're always gonna end up with an even number of in our rows going up and down. And we need that because of the cross stitching that we're gonna be doing that gives it a really nice visual effect. So no matter what you do, do even numbers and then just add one extra chain at the end and then carry on from that process. So if you're doing this 12 inch bottle, 
chain 41 and everybody else just chain to the length that you need. Okay, so we're essentially just gonna go second chain from the hook and essentially when we do that is that it eliminates one chain. Therefore, in my case, because I went 41, it's gonna make sure that every row going forward now it's only gonna have 40 stitches across. So one and two. So just go chain uh, second from the hook and what I just did to keep it nice and clean is that I turned my, my chain upside down. So this is how you see it and what I want you to do is just come into one chain. It looks like a little bump and if you're into Tunisian crochet you will know recognize that immediately as well. And so I want you to single crochet into that bump. Once you do the first one you'll see that the chain is actually looks like it's upside down. The reason why I'm having you do that is that it does a really nice edge. So when you're uh, being able to put your edges together to sew them you'll have a very clean looking edge. So essentially this is um, just single crochet all the way across and we'll meet back up in a few seconds where we'll carry on with the next. So just single crochet we'll meet back up in just a few moments. So we're coming up all the way to the end and you can see that the underside of the chain looks really sharp. So that's exactly what we're looking for. So let's turn our work just like so and we're gonna chain up one. So this is going on to row number three. So we essentially just want to single crochet ourselves all the way back again on this and let me tell you a little bit more about this pattern is that we have a total of three rows that are always repeating each other. So we're always gonna repeat rows number two, three and four throughout this. If you were to change color and you were me, I would essentially change it every time you're doing the crisscrossing which is the next row up and then make all the single crochets to be the same color. It would make the crisscrossing really jump out and really provide a really unique effect. So when you're working your way around the bottle you're gonna wanna keep it so that you have the three groups of stitches working together so when you go to do the very end with the seam is that you will not be able to tell where you started and, 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 and finished really. It's really quite remarkable. So continue to single crochet all the way across. This is our row, our row number three. We're gonna move up to row number four next which is the crisscross which really provides the kick in the pattern. So we're coming across row number three just like you see here and just for kicks I wanna change the color on the very final stitch. So in order to do that you're gonna pretend that you're gonna single crochet but you're not gonna finish and you're gonna leave two loops on your hook just like so. We're gonna to wanna to grab the new color and I'm gonna choose purple today and we're just gonna put it up. You notice I did not tie it. I just looped it onto my hook and now I'm gonna turn my work. So I wanna keep an eye on those straggler pieces and I obviously wanna trim the pink at this point as well. And we're gonna bury that within the round, or within the row and so you don't see it. So we're gonna turn the work and we wanna keep a hold of everything so that we can keep track. So essentially I'm gonna bring the stragglers around the back end just like you see but I wanna bring them toward the top here. So if I was to start this uh, row just like it says in the instructions you'll chain up three. So one, two and three and essentially what I wanna do now is keep these stragglers in check by just leaving them on top. As we go around them it's gonna trap it underneath. So we're gonna be doing a crisscross and this is how you do a crisscross crochet. You're gonna wrap and going in. So you're gonna skip the first stitch, go to the second like so. So keep those stragglers on top like you see. So just double crochet and now this is the one that we skipped. So we essentially just want to wrap and we want to just turn it over just like see and come around from the back side keeping those stragglers and everything on top of the line and double crochet like so. So essentially now you have a crisscross look to it. So keep these stragglers, kind of pull them snug and again we keep crisscrossing all the way across. So we skip the first stitch, go to the second and make sure those stragglers are on top. So that's a double and then we just essentially just come back to the stitch that we that we skipped just by turning our work forward and just grabbing it underneath. And we double crochet ourselves just like so. So it's for clarity I'm gonna put that straggler in. I would actually do it one more time but I really want you to see this crisscross. So again crisscross we skip the first one, go to the second for a double crochet and then we come back so wrap again, turn it, flip it and go to the stitch from the back side. Okay, so essentially we're coming in but we need the hook to come in from the front going through like this. 
So in order to do that we have to wrap it and then just bend it, flex it forward so the stitch is visible and just come in just like so. And once you get the rhythm of this it's really quick. It really truly is. So don't look at me uh, fumbling around thinking oh it's too hard. It really isn't. It goes qu pretty quick. So you skip the first one, go to the second and I'm just going to move to my regular speed here. And I'm not a speed crocheter. I'm just enthusiastic about crochet. So you know when you have determination you can move along pretty good. And essentially this whole line goes relatively quickly and because you are double crocheting you're growing your work even faster. So I'm going to carry on to go right to the end. You can see how the crisscross is a nice really effect. The sangria bottle has that as well but because the colors are really blending it almost looks like the sangria bottle that I did is actually knitted because it looks like it's got cabling in it and so it's really unique. So I'm going to carry on to the end. I'll meet you back up. I'm going to change the color back to pink and then I'm just going to show you and remind you of the repeat pattern and then basically cover how to assemble your bottle once you've got all the components done. So we're just coming up to the very end and because you remember that we have even numbers that the first one that you chained up counts as a double crochet in the rules of uh, thing of crochet and then essentially these are all in groups of two. So essentially your final one will crisscross as normal or as normal as can be really. <laughs> and essentially here we go. Just continuing to crisscross and when we crisscross like this you will end up with the final one just like so is being exposed and ready and you will just double crochet in that. But I don't want you to finish the double crochet on that. I want you to keep two on the hook just like so and I want to change the color back to pink because I only want the crisscross to be a different color and again loop your yarn just pull it through and so essentially just turn your work. So essentially we just have to continue to repeat what we've already done. So you'll have two rows of single crochet, one row of crisscross and you keep doing that until you get to the length that you need in order to wrap around the bottle. So let's uh, begin again. I'm just going to get you started. So we're going to chain one and essentially we want to grab the stragglers coming around from the back side. Back side kind of keeps it out of your way just so you know. So we're going to come into the first stitch single crochet and we keep those stragglers on top so that they can be buried underneath so you can trim your work and you'll never have to worry about them falling out or being visible. Um, one thing that I did notice throughout this project is that I questioned if I was doing single crochet enough. Sometimes I, I thought that maybe I was adding an extra row or I wasn't doing enough. So you want, might want to write down on a piece of paper um, to make sure that you're not losing count at any particular point. So you can see that it's a lot easier doing it this way. So essentially you're just going to single crochet again uh, down the row and then you're going to single crochet the next row. So you have two in a row and then you will crisscross again and basically you'll want to do that for the duration of this product or project as you're going all the way around the bottle. So the next part of this video is I'm going to show you what you need to do in order to bring everything together and uh, you can use your imagination and then you can embellish your project any way you want and then give it away as a gift or even put it under your tree just for a little bit of uh, ornamental uh, decor for your home. So essentially as I just talked about is that you will need to do two single crochets and then a crisscross, two single crochets and a crisscross. So essentially that's what you have to do in order to go all the way around. So how do you know when you're done? You are going to be going up and down just like you see here and as soon as that the, this edge matches up here or you can get it all the way around your bottle with a little bit of stretch, you don't want it to look sloppy, is that you know that you're complete on this. Once you get that done you just sew the one edge to the other. So it then will form a tube just like you see here. So you have a complete tube that your bottle will slip inside of and then essentially all you have to do is that once you have that tube formation you will take the base just like you see. It doesn't matter which way you want to place it. That's basically subject to you but then you will sew it so that it's with the bottom just like you see. So it's sewed right on this line just like you see. So essentially if you want to do a tie, I actually had a tie done before I put this bow and if you want to do that you can just chain 50 and then use that chain just to kind of go in and where I did it is this is where the bottle starts going down to the neck and this is where I put it so that it looks pretty nice and clean. So instead of doing to the top where you'd have all that empty space I did it right to the base here. 
In this particular one right here is that I put a bow instead at that point and then I just simply just put my bell on and a little bit, bit of embellishments around the bow area so that somebody can just loosen off your bow just like so they don't have to fuzz, uh, fizzle around or fuss around with any of the embellishments and get it off so they can enjoy their wine faster. So that would be how you do the Sangria wine bottle cover and this is again a free pattern available here on the Crochet Crowd. Dot com. Until next time on behalf of redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd, I'm your host Mikey. Enjoy and this is the first gift of Christmas for 2013. Take care now and we'll see you soon.